Hey everyone, welcome back to another pre-algebra lesson. Today's topic is going to be about the greatest common factor. The main objective of this lesson is to teach you how to find the greatest common factor between two or more numbers. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you three different ways to find the greatest common factor for two or more numbers. If you need to review what a factor is, please watch my previous video on prime factorization and factors. Let's get into it. After we've discussed some vocabulary and some background information, these are the four objectives we're going to cover in this lesson. The first method I'm going to show you for finding the GCF is going to be by listing. This is the most basic method, but it's the easiest to understand. Next, I'm going to show you how to find the GCF by using prime factorizations. The third method I'm going to show you is called the cake or the ladder method. This method requires the least amount of time and work. To bring it all together at the end, we'll solve some application questions using the GCF. Let's go over some key vocabulary words you'll need to know to follow along in this lesson. Let's start with prime numbers. Remember, prime numbers have exactly two factors. Some of the most common prime numbers you'll see are 2, 3, 5, and 7. What about composite numbers? Well, composite numbers are numbers that can be broken down into prime numbers. Some examples of composite numbers are 9, 10, 12, 15, and 18. Remember, prime factorizations are just the multiplication sentences of prime numbers that equal any given number. The prime factorization for 42 is 2 times 3 times 7. All composite numbers can be broken down into a multiplication sentence of just prime numbers. Factors are just numbers that multiply to get another number. Here, when I say 4 times 5 is 20, 4 is a factor and 5 is a factor. While numbers on their own have factors, numbers can have common factors with other numbers out there. Consider 24 and 36. They have many factors in common. While 1 is a common factor for 24 and 36, so are 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. These are all common factors because they go into both 24 and 36. While every pair of numbers will have at least one common factor, their greatest common factor is the largest one they have in common. In this example, 12 would be the greatest common factor for 24 and 36. It's the largest number that goes into both of them evenly. In a previous lesson, we discussed how to find all the factors of a given number. Individually, these are all the factors of 24. Separately, these are all the factors for 18. Notice how I circled all the common factors in yellow. Here we can see that 24 and 18 have four factors in common. 1, 2, 3, and 6. Of the four factors that they have in common, 6 is the largest, making it the greatest common factor, or GCF. Intuitively, the listing method makes a lot of sense to people because they can visually see all of the factors in front of them. When they see the largest one out of the ones on the list, they see that is the greatest common factor. A lot of students like the listing method because it's easy to follow. On the other hand, one of the negatives is that it takes a long time, especially when the numbers get much bigger than 24 or 18. Let's take a look at the prime factorization method now. On the top row, you can see the prime factorization for 24. If you need to, you can make a factor tree to create this prime factorization. On the bottom row, you can see the prime factorization for 18. Instead of listing all the factors of 24 and 18 out, we can just write their prime factorizations and see what prime numbers they have in common. In this example, you can see that 18 and 24 have the common primes of 2 and 3. It turns out if you multiply their common prime factors together, you always get the GCF. If you wonder how many times the GCF fits into 24, you can multiply the numbers we didn't circle, the 2 and the 2, to figure out the other factor. 6 times 4 is 24. Similarly, we can multiply the GCF by this 3 here to get 18. A couple advantages of the prime factorization method is that you don't need to list all the factors and it takes a lot less time. Also, it's another opportunity for you to improve your ability to use prime factorizations. The only small downside here is that you might not be used to finding prime factorizations yet, you just need a little bit more practice. With some repetition and hard work, the prime factorization method is going to be great. That brings us to the ladder or the cake method. This method is the quickest and requires the least amount of writing. However, since it looks a little bit more abstract, a lot of people forget how it works. When completing the ladder method, you start off by just writing the two numbers next to each other. Here we're going to write 24 and 18. After that, you just draw an L to represent a step on a ladder or a layer in a cake. At this point, you just have to find one common factor that 18 and 24 have in common. In this case, I chose 2. It's okay if you didn't choose the same number as me, I'll go over that in just a moment. Underneath the 24, you write how many times 2 goes into it. 2 goes into 24 12 times. Under the 18, you write how many times 2 fits into that, which it fits in 9 times. Once you've written the 12 and the 9, you create another layer of the cake, or another step on the ladder. This is where you repeat the process until you can't anymore. What common factors can you think of for 12 and 9? The only one I can think of here is 3. 3 goes into 12 4 times, so I'll write a 4 down here, and 3 fits into 9 3 times, so I'll put a 3 down here. We know to stop creating steps for the ladder or layers for the cake when the GCF of these bottom numbers is 1. 
Since the only common factor 4 and 3 have together is 1, we can't get any smaller. The product of these numbers on the side always results in our greatest common factor. Again, the GCF here is 6. While I chose to start with a 2, what if you chose to start with 3 instead? This still works. 3 fits into 24 8 times, and 3 fits into 18 6 times. Since I know 8 and 6 still have a common factor of 2, I'm going to write that on the side. 2 goes into 8 4 times, and 2 goes into 6 3 times. You can see the bottom numbers here are the same as when we did on the left. 3 times 2 is still going to get us 6. What if you looked at 24 and 18 and went straight to using 6? This works perfectly fine as well. 6 goes into 24 4 times, and 6 goes into 18 3 times. While you get a short ladder or a short cake, you get the GCF even quicker. Notice how this compares with the prime factorization method. Notice how the prime factors we identified as being in common from prime factorization match the prime factors we pulled out from the ladder method. However, a lot of people like the ladder method because if you can see the greatest common factor right away, you can do it very quickly. The biggest advantage of this method is that it's very quick and requires very little writing. The biggest downside of this method is that a lot of people don't really understand what they're doing. While it's quick and efficient, it sort of hides what's really going on. Let me show you some visual representations of what the greatest common factor looks like. Since we're talking about factors, we can think of 24 and 18 as being the area of a shape. Let's take a simple shape like a rectangle. If we create rectangles that are 1 by 24 and 1 by 18, they'll have those specific areas. We could connect these rectangles perfectly since they have a common side length of 1. We could also represent 24 with 2 times 12 and represent 18 as 2 times 9. Since they can both be written with the common dimension of 2, these rectangles can be put next to each other as well. In addition, we could represent 24 as 3 times 8, and we can represent 18 as 3 times 6. Here we can see that 18 and 24 have a common factor of 3. The big takeaway you want to have here is that the longest side length they could share in common is 6. Instead of thinking about it geometrically, we can consider cookies and brownies. Imagine if we have 24 cookies and 18 brownies. Since 1 is a common factor, we could certainly give all the cookies and all the brownies to that one person. Since 2 is a common factor, we could split all the cookies and brownies between two people. Each person would get 12 cookies and 9 brownies. Since 3 was a common factor, we could split the cookies and brownies three ways, each person getting 8 cookies and 6 brownies. Last but not least, we could divide all the cookies and brownies among 6 people, each person getting 4 cookies and 3 brownies. The most important takeaway I want you to have from this lesson is that you're trying to maximize the amount of people you're giving things to while being fair to everybody. To get the most out of this lesson, I strongly suggest taking out something to write with and something to write on. Pause the video frequently and re-listen to any parts that are important. In example 1, we're going to find the GCF by listing factors. Here, we have 36 and 24. Let's start by writing the factors of 36 out. 1 and 36 are going to always come first, 2 and 18 because it's even, 3 times 12 is going to get us 36, 4 times 9, and 6 times 6. These are all the factors for 36. If you need to write a prime factorization out, go ahead. Next, let's write the factors for 24. We start off with 1 and 24, go to 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. For starters, remember that 1 is a common factor for all numbers in the world. Since they're both even, 2 is a common factor. They're both divisible by 3, they're both divisible by 4, they're both divisible by 6, but the largest number they're both divisible by is 12. The greatest common factor for 36 and 24 is 12. Alright, let's try finding the GCF one more time by listing. Of course, 1 is always a common factor. Here, 2 is also a common factor. 4 is a common factor. 8 is a common factor. And 16 is a common factor. Out of all these common factors, 16 is the largest, making it the greatest common factor. Now it's your turn. Pause the video and try to find the GCF for 20 and 28 by listing all their factors. Unpause when you're ready to check. The GCF is 4. And let's try one more. Find the GCF for 45 and 30 by listing all their factors. Pause the video now. The greatest common factor for 45 and 30 is 15. At this point, I hope that you understand the concept of finding the greatest common factor. While the listing method is conceptually very clear, it can be very time consuming as the numbers get larger. In example two, I'm gonna teach you how to find the GCF using prime factorizations. While you can make factor trees to find prime factorizations, I'm gonna challenge you to try and do it mentally with me here. Remember, some of the most common primes we'll use in prime factorizations are two, three, five, seven, and 11. Let's try to write the prime factorization for 80 without making a factor tree. Well, we know it's even, so we can divide it by two. If we divide 80 by two, we're left with 40. We can divide that in half again to make 20. 
20 can be cut in half again, so we'll put another 2 to make 10. We can cut 10 in half one more time to make 5, and 5's prime. Here we have the prime factorization for 80. It's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. You can pause the video to think about it a little bit more, or you can also just make a factor tree. Let's try it again with 100. Since it's even, we know we can divide it by 2, and that makes 50. We know we can divide 50 by 2 to make 25. 25 isn't even, but we can break it into 5 times 5, which are two prime numbers. The prime factorization for 100 is 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. To find the greatest common factor between 80 and 100, we just have to find what they have in common on their prime factorization lists. First, I notice they both have a 2. Then, I notice they have another 2. Finally, I notice that they both have a 5. If you multiply the common prime numbers together, you're going to get the GCF. The greatest common factor for 80 and 100 is 20. While not all the common factors are listed here, we know the greatest common factor right away. If you're wondering how many times 20 goes into 80, we know it goes in 4 times because of these leftover primes here. 2 times 2 is 4. Similarly, 20 goes into 100 5 times. Now here's a little secret for you. If you already have the GCF, you can actually use it to find all the other common factors if you needed them. You just have to find the factors of the GCF. The factors of 20 are a lot smaller, so we have 1 and 20, 2 and 10, and 4 and 5. If 20 is the GCF, all of its factors will also be common factors, just not the greatest common factor. Let's try this one more time with numbers 45 and 28. Let's try to write their prime factorizations without making a factor tree. Again, if you need to, go ahead and pause the video and make one. It's not even, so we're going to avoid using 2. But could we use 3? Sure. 3 times 15 gets us 45. 15 can be broken down into 3 and 5, so we'll break that into a 3 and a 5 here. The prime factorization for 45 is 3 times 3 times 5. For 28, we can start off with a 2 since it's even. Half of 20 is 14. What does 14 break down into? Well, it's 2 times 7, so we'll put a 2 here and a 7 here. The prime factorization for 28 is 2 times 2 times 7. At this point, you should notice that 45 and 28 don't have any common prime factors here. This is where you have to be careful and don't say that they don't have a GCF. All numbers have a GCF. The GCF for 45 and 28 is going to be 1. Even though they don't have any prime factors in common, 1 is still a common factor of 45 and 28. Now it's your turn. Try finding the prime factorizations for each of these numbers and find their common primes. When you're done, multiply those common primes to find a GCF. Pause the video and give it a try. The greatest common factor of 1, 20, and 75 is 15. And let's try this strategy one more time. Find the prime factorizations for each of these numbers and see what they have in common. Pause the video and give it a try. The GCF for 52 and 39 is 13. At this point, I've shown you two ways of finding the GCF. The first one was by listing, and the second one was by using prime factorizations. In example three, I'm going to show you a third method called the ladder or the cake method for finding the GCF. If you can remember the algorithm for this method, it's going to be the quickest and most efficient method for you to use. As you can see here, 144 and 96 are quite large. If you were to list all the factors or to use prime factorizations, it would take a little bit longer. When using the ladder or the cake method, we're essentially going to be creating steps on the ladder or layers to an upside down cake. The original numbers here create our first step of the ladder or the first layer of cake. At this point, we need to think of what number can we divide 144 and 96 by. Any number that you think of that goes into both is usable here. Since these numbers are a little bit on the bigger side, I'm going to start with saying 2 because they're both even. Half of 144 is going to be 72, and half of 96 is going to be 48. This is the second layer of the cake. While we can divide 72 and 48 by 2 again, at this point it's a little bit easier to find a larger number. Remember from your multiplication facts that 8 goes into both of these. I'm going to put an 8 here on the side. 8 times 9 is 72, and 8 times 6 is 48. A common factor for 9 and 6 is going to be 3. 3 goes into 9 3 times, and 3 goes into 6 2 times. At this point, we're going to stop with the 3 and 2 because their only common factor is 1. They can't be broken down anymore. If you find the product of all of those numbers on the left-hand side, you'll find the GCF. The GCF is going to be the product of 2, 8, and 3. In this case, the GCF is going to be 48. 48 times 3 is going to get us the original number of 144, and 48 times 2 is going to get us the original number of 96. At this point, it's important to notice the connection between the prime factorization method and the ladder method. Notice the common primes that I circled between 144 and 96. Three twos in the middle here can make 8. These methods are related in the fact that these three twos here make 8, which matches over here on the left side. Similarly, these threes match, 
as well as these twos. Basically, the latter method lets you skip and combine some of the prime factors to go a little faster. Let's try another one together with 150 and 90. Since 10 goes into both 150 and 90, we can divide them both by 10 to get 15 and 9. Since I know 15 and 9 both have another common factor between them, I'm going to make another layer or another step. Since 3 is a common factor, I'm going to write it on the left here. 3 goes into 15 5 times, while 3 goes into 9 3 times. Since 1 is the only common factor between 5 and 3, I know I'm done here. The product of these left side numbers here is going to get us our GCF. The GCF for 150 and 90 is going to be 30. Now it's your turn to practice. Pause the video and give this a try. The GCF for 72 and 96 is 24. And let's practice using the latter method one more time. Pause the video and give it a try. The GCF for 36 and 90 is 18. Earlier, I mentioned that you can find the GCF of two or more numbers. In example four, I'm gonna show you how to find the GCF of three numbers. In this first example, we have the numbers 18, 24, and 40. First, I wouldn't use the listing method because there's a lot of factors to write for more numbers here. While writing prime factorizations is a little bit faster, it still takes quite a bit of time here. When we have three or more numbers, I do suggest using the latter method here. Remember, we're gonna start off by writing our three numbers across like this. Then we ask ourselves, what number goes into all three of these numbers here? Now, since they're all even, I'm gonna put a two out here. Half of 18 is going to be nine, half of 24 is 12, and half of 40 is going to be 20. In the first line here, we found that two was a common factor of all three numbers. However, when we look at these three numbers, 9, 12, and 20, I can't think of any numbers that go into all three besides 1. If that's the case, the only number on the left side here, 2, is the greatest common factor. You can imagine that the more numbers you have, the more difficult it is to find a common factor. Let's try another one here with larger numbers. Since they're all even, I'm going to put a 2 here on the side. Half of 36 is going to be 18, half of 54 is going to be 27, and half of 72 is going to be 36. Looking at 18, 27, and 36, I notice that 9 is a common factor of all three. 9 goes into 18 two times, it goes into 27 three times, and it goes into 36 four times. Looking at the three numbers at the bottom, I notice they have no common factor besides 1. Since we can't go any further, we know the product of the numbers on the left column here equal the greatest common factor. In this case, the greatest common factor is going to be 18. 18 fits into 72 four times, 18 fits into 54 three times, and 18 fits into 36 two times. Now it's your turn. I'd like you to pause the video here and try finding the GCF of 15, 8, and 24. While you can use any method, the ladder or the cake method might be the quickest. If you're having trouble finding a greatest common factor here, it's not that there isn't one, it's that the greatest common factor here is one. Even though they don't have any common prime numbers together, they still have a common factor of one. Let's just try one more. Pause the video and find the greatest common factor of 45, 30, and 60. Unpause when you're ready to check. The GCF for these three numbers is 15. In example five, we're gonna go over some application word problems. Pause the video and read the question carefully. Unpause it when you're ready to go over it with me. First, it's important to note that we have a rectangle that has an area of 48 square inches. Since the formula to find area is equal to length times width, we know we're going to be looking for factors for 48. Similarly, we have another rectangle that has an area of 32 inches squared. To find whole number dimensions of 32, we're going to have to look for factors. The word greatest here gives us a hint that we're looking for the greatest common factor. Since we're looking to fit these two rectangles side by side perfectly, they have to be the same length. Just to be very clear, I'm going to do this first example using all three methods. While we can create multiple different rectangles with these areas, which dimensions will give us the greatest matching side length? It turns out that the dimensions that contain the greatest common factor will create the greatest common side length between the two rectangles. We can put this 3 by 16 and 2 by 16 rectangle next to each other, showing the greatest common side length of 16 inches. While there were other dimensions we could use to match up these rectangles, these dimensions give us the greatest common side length. Since listing is tedious, let's take a look at using the prime factorization method again here. 48 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 and 32 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. By multiplying the common prime factors together here, we can see the GCF would be 16. This would be a quicker way to solve this problem. Finally, let me show you one more time how to find the GCF using the ladder or the cake method. No matter which method you use, you can see how the greatest common factor is 16 here. In conclusion, the dimensions for these rectangles should be 3 by 16 and 2 by 16. We've drawn the diagram, and we've also used two different methods to solve it. Now it's time to see how much information you've retained during this lesson. Pause the video and try example B here. 
When you're ready, unpause the video to see the solution. It turns out 14 identical groups could be made. Since the directions didn't say which method or how many methods I needed to use, I decided to use prime factorizations here. Since the directions mentioned to create some sort of visual or diagram, I created a little picture here to represent each group. To be very clear, I also wrote a little bit of information at the bottom to show how my answer does make sense. Here's the final example of the lesson. Pause the video now and read the question carefully to yourself. When you're ready to check your answer or you need a hint, feel free to unpause the video and check it out. Since the directions did say to use two different methods, I chose to use the prime factorization method and the latter method. I chose not to use the listing method because it would take way too much time to list all the factors of 72, 96, and 48. Also, since the directions did say to create some sort of visual, I created a diagram where I represent what one person would get. Each person would get three Jolly Ranchers, four Kit Kats, and two Smarties. Since there are 24 people that will get this amount of candy, I wrote times 24 to represent all 24 people. Towards the bottom here, I show some proof as to how I know my answer makes sense. Each of these people is going to get 9 total pieces of candy, times 24, gets us a total of 216 total pieces of candy. Since each person is going to get 9 candies, and there's 24 people, that's going to be a total of 216 pieces of candy. If we add up the original numbers of 72, 96, and 48, that also equals 216 total pieces of candy. I hope you found this lesson useful in covering these four objectives, and I wish you the best of luck with applying these concepts to solve any problems that you need to. See you in the next one!